Hi, friends. Yep, I'm a chump, as my friend Dana would say. I say simp, but chump and simp are definitely in the same category. We have the Burberry Eye Palette Monogram Collection. Why did I buy this? I couldn't tell you. Perhaps it was because I missed out on last year's palette that was limited edition. It had the plums and burgundies. I skipped it because I'm like, look, I was at a place where maybe I bought a lot or I felt I couldn't use another eyeshadow palette. But when I saw this year's, something about these cooler tones, they grabbed me, they grabbed me. And just to curtail any future comments, I am under the weather, so if you detect a change in, in voice tone, lower energy levels, is because I'm sick, most definitely. But I still wanted to film because I, I'm inside and don't have to do anything overly physical. Don't have to do anything physical, but talking might be a problem. We got the water on standby, so don't you worry, fam. We're gonna get through this video. I did order the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes, not all of them. I ordered Vega and Myth, as well as the Sorcery Lip Velvet. I wanted to buy the Sorcery eyeshadow palette, but I held back because already two palettes was like a pretty penny, and I figured once I've solidified my experience with the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes, I can just buy the singles going forward, and I'm not in a rush. Yes, I underwent the FOMO, and people were like, I got sorcery. I'm like, oh, I should've got sorcery too. But the sorcery lippy sold out. So I'm happy I grabbed that one, right? I'm I'm sure I'm gonna be thrilled with my choices. I purchased, oh, sorry about the light change, a $125 eyeshadow palette. What's wrong with me? But here we are, just a few details here. Uh, 18 month suggested shelf life, of course, made in Italy. We look to have a mixture of mattes and metallics and shimmers. I had wanted to go on the website and see more product detail, but I couldn't even find the page. It's like hidden somewhere, I don't even know. Going in this direction for the swatches, we have gold metallic, bronze satin, brown matte, midnight satin, ooh, champagne mist, ooh, that's shiny. We like that. Copper metallic, deep brown matte, golden brown satin. Interesting they would name that. It looks olive. Khaki maybe? And lastly, we have our rose gold metallic. So here are all the swatches from the Monogram Collection eyeshadow palette. This is what drew me in. The, the khaki olive shade I adore, especially in this baked formula, or I say baked, maybe it's more like a traditional powder because of how the pan looks now. Of course, you can see that the pans have that fabric texture on them because Burberry is a fashion brand. And on the lid, you have the Burberry logo overlapping with this silver chrome finish. It's absolutely gorgeous. What attracted me to this palette was just its simplicity and my desire to create one and done looks with beautiful impact. Not having to apply two, three eyeshadows at once, appreciating the one color itself because of the shine here. I mean, we've seen these shades before. They exist, they exist in my collection 100%. But again, I was a chump about it and I wanted to buy it because I had extreme FOMO for missing last year's palette but I prefer this year, so you know, it's okay. With details and swatches out the way, it's time for you to come in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. On the face, I have Auric Glow Lust in Sunstone, Hourglass Ambient Foundation in 11, and the Burberry Glow Face Palette, the Essentials Glow Palette in the medium deep curation. I thought, you know, appropriate to slap on the Burberry cheek products now that we got the Burberry eyeshadow palette. I gotta start with this color. Well, I kinda wanna start with the rose gold as well. It's, it's interesting they consider that rose gold. I pick up more like lavender silver. You know, I guess brands have different interpretation of what how shades appear and whatnot. Definitely using one of my Sonia Fusion eye brushes if I could find it. Let's go in with our Fusion Worker. On the lids, I just have my LYS concealer 
and hopping into our golden brown. This is described to be a satin shade and man, incredible pickup. Yes, with the brush, but the texture makes it extremely easy. Whoa, I have to wipe some off my towel here, otherwise the color will travel too high. In fact, let me switch to a fluffier brush so I could get a softer blend here on the edges. And what I was looking forward towards is, as I assume, because of these softer satin textures, you can just blend them out once you've applied the majority of the shadow on the lid, not necessarily having to use a matte, and I think that's absolutely gorgeous. If you wanted, we could go in with the brown matte here, and I'm lightly tapping to not overwhelm the edges of the, of the khaki shade, or olive khaki, however you wanna categorize it. And that's just lovely. Let's take up our Fusion Detail, I think. Where are you, Mr. Detail Brush? Pulling that under our lash line to complete the look. We could have gone in with the brown matte and maybe just kind of cut the corners with the khaki shade, but I like having the majority of this. I keep going between olive and khaki. <laughs> How about Kalev? But let's trace those edges with the brown matte here. Thing that makes a lovely soft gradient and finishing the edges here closer to the brow so it could come to a natural fade. If you want it, once all is said and done, you can apply a little more of that matte. That is just beautiful. Like I've never seen this color before. I'm just impressed, okay? Just let me, let me be a simp for the entire, <laughs> dropping brushes, entire video. We could go with the rose gold, I think we gotta go in with the champagne shade because whoo, look at that shine, my goodness. Tapping that on the inner part of the eye, overlapping is with the golden brown. That's what they say this shade is, golden brown. Interesting. I like to overlap it so we could get a little more of that shine here on the inner part of the eye. Yeah, I want to go in with the rose gold shade, but how can we set that up? I'm curious to see how this dark brown matte behaves, so we'll start here. I'm taking in my Blender Pro, stamping it first on the outer part of the lid. And why not, let's take it also on the inner part of the lid here, because it could be advantageous, you know, to woo, this is a nice matte formula. It's soft, but it's not super powdery in the pan, and it blends very well on the skin. I wiped my brush on the towel to take off excess product so I can focus on blending what's already present on the lid so as to not overwhelm the crease with shadow. If I wanted to, I could go back here and stamp on a little bit more, but nice that it's soft enough to blend without having to use the lighter brown matte. But I'll tap in a little bit here just to place some through the arc after I've already established that blend. Yes, yes. Ooh, smoke it, smoke it, okay. Taking a little bit of the brown matte and again, reinforcing that smoky dose of color there on the outer lid. Now time for the rose gold. I'm going in with my finger Oh yeah, this is a beautiful combination. Again, interesting that they call it rose gold. Maybe the rose gold I've encountered are warmer and I've never really known the official uh, description or look to rose gold. I just have a picture in mind, like something warmer pink leaning but I ain't mad at that at all. I think I wanna choose a different shade to place under the lid. Should we do that? I don't know. Let's go in with this bronze satin shade. Ooh, that's nice. It will appear lighter than what's going on on top, but what we can do to balance that out is choose a smaller brush. I'm choosing my Refer 3, a small pencil brush here. Go back in with the dark brown and just lightly bracket the outer corners of the eye, right? So that 
the darkest part of the shadow sits here on the outer edges and then it'll lighten up as we go into that more metallic bronze shade. Just a final blend here on the edges, ensuring that everything looks smooth. Ooh, we have to place something on poke on the inner corner. We could go in with the same shade or what is this? Copper metallic. Copper metallic might be a little warm though for what we're looking to achieve here. Do you think that'll be okay though? You know what? We got it. We just got to go for it. This picks up Oh, I picked up a lot. Okay. All right. We went super warm, but man, isn't that pretty? So we could, you know what I'm going to do? I'll take rose gold here and go over the copper metallic. That should adjust the warmth a little bit. Perhaps, you know, it's totally fine to kind of embrace your mistakes, but a part of me just wanted to see that shade in action. So here we are. Also tapping in a little bit more of the dark brown matte, overlapping that metallic application, maybe to soften a little bit. Huh? Was that a mistake? I don't know. That's okay. All right, round one is done. Let's slap on some lashes touch of lipstick and I'll be right back. Here is round one using the Burberry eyeshadow palette. And on the lips, I have Suku's Sheer Matte Lipstick in 14 and Mother's Permagel Lip Liner in Supernatural. Listen, these colors we've seen before, they're ultra basic, but it's the formula, it's the curation that drew me in, especially if you're one who seeks out an eyeshadow palette that's ultra luxurious, but that performs as well. That's just exquisite in its offering. Like you can get a more solid experience than this Burberry eyeshadow palette. Like I said, it's not because it contains new profound shades and, and finishes. It's just more so the experience feels secure. And I know I could pack this up and create an ultra smoky look. You know, I could really bump this up if I had wanted, add in a little bit of the dark brown matte or go softer with the more metallic bronzes in here. But I think in the next round, I want to experiment with layering the rose gold over the more copper bronze metallics in here so we can alter the warmth a little bit if you want that to be more cool leaning and you know just see what we can do with that so i'm excited to get into it let's change it up and i'll see you back here in a minute gotta go in with the bronze satin shade for the same reasons i explained using the golden brown 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 shade right underneath but these types of textures, I think it make it so seamless to create a fast, just plop on some shadow, call it a day, and you're done. Skin like and finish, very soft. Yeah, it has enough coverage. It gives just enough, just enough smoke. Taking a little bit of that brown matte here through the edges to pull it out further past my lash line and then taking a little bit more here on the lid. But what we can do is tap into gold metallic and place that right on the center of the bronze satin shade. And that gives it a little more dimension there on the center of the lid. I'll place the bronze metallic shadow here under my lash line and taking a little bit more with my Blender Pro to fill up the outer lid there and bringing up the brown matte higher and again using that champagne mist on the inner corner and pulling it around so it can flow into the inner part of my lower lash line if you wanted to darken this up you could use well you could use this shade too i forgot about what is this midnight satin but i am placing the dark metallic shade here on my lash line with refer three. If you wanted to just plop on a darker shadow on top of the bronze, bronze satin shade. And happy to report that it doesn't disappear. It's, it appears as the color. If you want it to look darker, then I would go in with an eye pencil like black coffee and then maybe on top with dark brown metallic. Now I wanna do, I gotta do this shade, I gotta do that shade. Tapping Midnight Satin now. Ooh, this, 
All right, we're getting smoky, okay. I'm being very careful here. I applied a majority of that color on the outer lid and now taking my fusion blender with no additional product to blend the edges here. That's pretty. I like how it's just dark, kind of charcoal-y, you know? And a little bit more just on the outer bracket of our, our, look at me, my lower lash line here because I want to add another color, but I'm thinking perhaps, ooh, we could do so many things. I think, what haven't what we used? Copper metallic on the first round, plopped it on the inner part of the eye, but I think I want this to overlap the midnight satin shade. Why not? So that you have that darker color here on the outer V. And I like that it's a satin shade because it's, I feel they are smoother than mattes typically. They're easier to blend because they have a little bit more pearl in there and the extra pearl, maybe I'm, I'm making this up, but I do think the extra pearl allows the shadow to blend easier on the lids than just a powder matte. And especially if you are intimidated by deeper shades like these, it's so easy to just blend the edges and like not have to worry about sabotaging your look. Rose gold, most definitely. Now on the rest of our lower lash line, connecting to that application of midnight. And also why not? I'm gonna bring it here over the copper metallic shade and just pull it over in this arcing fashion and then placing a little more of the midnight satin here over copper metallic, yeah? If you really wanted to darken this up, you could place that dark brown matte over the edges, but I've already blended this shadow pretty high, so if I were to keep it lower, maybe I could have went in with the brown matte to add that layer of a blend but we're you know we're doing good i think we could stop there all right it's time to apply some lashes and i'll be right back and here is our final round using the monogram palette my apologies for not presenting six looks you know i guess i'm just taking it easy today i think you can gather the ease of use from this palette, how simple it is. And basically, if you decide to buy it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. It delivers, I think, what you see online to the T. And I was pleasantly surprised by how shiny the, even the satins, the satins have beautiful shine, but the metallics have even more from like that champagne color and the copper, bronzy copper shades in there, the golds, can't go wrong with these shades and probably a, a pleasure to experience a luxury brand delivering a makeup product that shows up, okay? I'm very happy with it. Yes, it was super expensive. I didn't need to buy it, but all in all, I'm incredibly happy with it and equally so with the eye looks I created. I will continue to use this palette. It easily will become a, a fast favorite for sure for our November monthly favorites coming up soon. Let me know if you have last year's Burberry palette, if you bought this one, if you ignored all the Burberry makeup. I'll see you down in those comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Lisa Eldridge video or Viziart. They sent me their new palette, so hopefully I could dive into those tomorrow. Take care, and I will see you here again soon.